Welcome to the AFJ Online Hoof Care Classroom. I'm Jeff Cota and I'm Managing Editor with American Farriers Journal. Thank you for joining us for this webinar. We'll begin the webinar in just a moment, but first let me get a few announcements out of the way. This presentation will run about 30, 40 minutes or so. After that, we'll have a Q&A session. If you look on the Go to Webinar control panel, you'll see a tab for questions. You can submit questions throughout the webinar and we'll go through as many as possible at the end. If you experience any technical issues such as audio or with the display, and I don't interrupt the presenter about the problem, the issue is likely on your end. In case of technical issues, call the GoToWebinar webinar helpline. Get a pen or pencil ready and I'll give you the number to call. They'll be able to troubleshoot your problem and are very quick to respond specific to your machine and internet connection. If you're in the United States, that number is 800-263-6317. If you're in an, any other country, the number is 1-805-617-7000. Again, in the United States, it's 800-263-6317. Outside of the United States, it's 1-805-617-7000. If the webinar session crashes, re-enter the webinar through the same link that, link that brought you here. If it crashed for all of us, I'll relaunch the session and wait a few minutes for everyone to rejoin, and then we'll pick back up where, we, where the presenter left off. Sponsoring the webinar is GE Forge and Tool. Forged from proprietary steel alloy, GE's tools are made to withstand the rigorous everyday work of professional farriers. GE professionals make their tools to ensure precision and consistency day after day. Learn more at geforge.com. So with that, let's begin the webinar. Josh, thanks for joining us and take it away. Thank you, Jeff. <clears throat> uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you for joining us. Um, and let's begin. Welcome to our uh, tool adjustment and maintenance seminar. I'll give you all the info that I possibly can. Uh, starting with basic tools. And these are real simple tools. Nothing is, everything is fairly inexpensive. Um, some stuff you probably already have. So um, a lot of this we'll get into in detail. Uh, wire brush, brass or stainless, um, some sort of lubricant. And that's obviously for the hinging part of your nipper or clincher or pull off. Um, hammers, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping everybody has a hammer. Uh, rags and towels, essentially just to clean up any extra mess of the oils. And uh, for our disclaimer, eye protection. Anytime you use a wire brush or, or hammers or some of some sort, you run the risk of getting something in the eye. So, with that being said, let's begin. Uh, first, we we'd like to encourage everybody to brush the stops, um, and I have them clearly marked up there. This is a little flat. Um, angles up there that they stop the, basically stop the blades from coming together all the way and, and crashing into each other. Um, very simply, you can see in the bottom picture, just taking that wire brush, having that, having that nipper open on a flat surface um, with your holding hand as close to the head as possible, that, that gives you the best support. And then just vigorously brushing back and forth. Um, and what that does is that gets any of that debris it gets built up in there it, and it solidifies over time and increasingly opens up that gap. Um, and you'll notice sometimes it's, it's getting harder and harder to nip and that could be a, a reason for that. It's not always the, the blades are wearing back it's just because you have buildup inside of there. Um, and just just brush away and, it, and if a brush doesn't work you can get a, a chisel or a screwdriver or something, some sharp object to chip it out of there if, if need be. We, we've seen that a few times so that's where the process begins. That's what we recommend. Um, step two 
or another brushing technique, I suppose, is <laughs> brush your teeth. Um, this is an important one. It, it, all that dirt and, and build up inside of those teeth, every time you clinch on a nail, as far as we've seen, um, a little bit of residue will get in between the nail and that tooth, and it slowly wears away and um, just doesn't keep it as sharp as it should for as long as it should. Um, and this is real simple. Brush it back and forth. And again, if, if something's clogged up in there deep, if you have a, a pick or a screwdriver or something, a hard object that you, you have to actually gouge it out of there, I recommend doing that. And, and it helps the to, to tool to function properly uh, for the life of the nipper or clincher, excuse me. Um, and lubricating your tool. Now, this is an, an ever important one, um, and, and it all depends on where you live and what kind of environment as to what type of lubrication you use. I know for most of us, we, we know about oils, um, which is the most common, and it'll, it'll work just about everywhere. Um, and as you can see, open up that nipper or clincher or pull-off, whatever tool it may be that has a rivet in it. You want to open it all the way up as you were with the, with the scrubbing part of that and just put a few drops. Now if it's the graphite powder you're gonna it's gonna come out real heavy depending on which one. It could be a powder or it can be a lock spray. They make make either one. Um, and it come out a little bit heavy but no worries. I mean a little bit a little extra won't hurt. After you get a little oil in there or lubrication just work it back and forth. Um, so as far as the dry, let's get into that dry lubrication. As far as that one goes, um, we recommend that in a dry, dusty environment. If there isn't a lot of moisture where you are, um, that obviously means there's a lot more dust. And by using a dry lube, that essentially inhibits the dust from wanting to come in there. Now the exact opposite would be using a wet lube in a dry environment. Anytime you put anything wet, a grease or an oil or anything in a dry, dusty environment, that lubrication will actually collect all that dust, um, just building up over time. Um, uh, as far as a, a wet lube goes, if you're in a wet, humid environment, you, you run the risk of, of rust and that sort of thing. So a wet lube is recommended. Now wet lube obviously it will help to clean out any of the, the dirt and mud that, that may build up in there um, if done regularly. And we, we recommend you do this you know a couple times a week. Um, a, a simple can of lube is just a few dollars you know three or four dollars for one of these. It'll, it'll make your tool last that much longer. Um, and then any excess, that's what the rags come in for. Any excess, you just, just simply wipe it off and um, keep on going. Now, adjusting the tools to fit your hand. This is a big one. We get a lot of phone calls um, wondering if we can make them narrower, wider, um, that sort of thing. Everybody's hands are different. We, we start from, from uh, one width and, and I encourage, if they don't fit your hands, they are your tool. Go ahead and, and make the adjustments necessary, and we'll, we'll go over that. And you can see there's many types of hands, many types of uses. So the first one is to make the handles narrower. Um, there's a couple ways to do this. Um, as you can see in the picture, by laying the handle over the anvil, and this one is laid over the um, the hardy hole, and, and what the, that just makes it a little bit easier to um, bend it in if necessary. So you want to lay the handle over the anvil, whether it be the hardy hole or over the flat surface of the anvil, and with the inside surface of that handle facing upwards, you're going to want to smack that right there in that, in that inside part of the handle. Now depending on where you want it more narrow, um, is depending on where you hit it on the on the handles themselves. Um, if if near the head, it's it's already uh, narrow enough for you, and it's let's say it's too wide at the top. 
one way to do this, and I don't have any pictures, but I'll try and explain as best I can. Um, if, if you're right-handed, to my best knowledge, if you're right-handed, your right hand will be at the top or furthest away from the head. And if you're left-handed, your hand will be at the top or furthest away from the head or on the handles. Um, what you'd want to do, if, if, it's, if you think you just want to narrow up the entire handle, you can simply lay the handle over the anvil like so and just smack it as close to the head as possible on that handle and it'll draw that handle in quite significantly. And you want to do this on both sides just to remain even. Uh, you don't want to get any lopsided handles. You'd be cutting the horse's feet funny. Um, now, if you want just to make them narrower to where your top hand um, because it's not quite reaching all the way. You simply grab your nipper or tool as you would, just standing there, as you would as you would be nipping on a, a horse, and with a marker, a pen, a pencil, some sort of marking device, um, be right between where your hands meet, you want to make a mark. And on that, and essentially on that mark, if you hit it on that mark, it'll only draw that half of the handle in, and that will essentially make it narrower towards the top of the handle or the bottom, depending on where you're, <laughs> what we're talking about here. Um, I, I guess we'll say the bottom of the handle, to close, furthest away from the head, it will draw that in, um, and that'll help to get that that hand around it there at the top. And repeat as many times as necessary on both sides to, to get your desired width. Now the same applies, but just opposite to widen the handles. If you need them wider, if you have big hands, um, or you like to use both hands um, on, on each rein or handle, then, then simply lay the tool over the anvil with the outside of the handle facing up and just give it a good smack. Um, and by using the rounding end of the hammer, it actually, it's a little bit easier. It'll leave a little mark on there if you're not worried about marks. Go ahead and hit it. If you, if you are and if you're really good, you can use that flat side of the hammer as well. and um, It'll do the same thing. just may not leave a little bit of a divot. So. And again, repeat on the other side uh, and do this as many times as necessary uh, see, right? to get your desired width. Oh, and going back to this. Do, if at all possible, and I do not ever recommend using the heat on these nippers. The steel is, is very sensitive to heat. They, they are normalized to a spring steel right now. Um, by adding heat, you are, you are messing with the temper of the steel. Um, that is always, it's never a recommendation to add heat to it. Um, and if you do add heat, which I don't recommend, never ever quench it in water. Don't, don't rapidly cool it off. If you ever have to heat it up, essentially just leave it out to cool off in the air. Um, then you'll get your best results out of that. And finally, we have our um, a little advertisement here. <laughs> I know we've been we've been hearing a lot of things on our clinchers and you know the, the other design, the curved jaw clincher was a little difficult to use um, from what I hear. Um, either cutting the clinches, the teeth being too sharp, or it was dragging the nail down the, the hoof wall, which is never good. Um, so we've redesigned our clincher. Um, as you can see on that bottom jaw, we've just did grooves instead of actual teeth. Now, from our experience um, and in videos, the bottom jaws there just apply pressure to the head of that nail and the clincher, the top jaw just does the rest. We'll go ahead and give you a preview here. Um, so you can actually see it in action. Now you can see it just simply rolls the, the head over and forces it into the hoof wall. And that's what we have. Very simple, very straightforward. Simple maintenance on the tools, just like any other tool that you use. Um, keep it clean, keep it lubed if, if it needs it. Um, use the correct lube in, in your environment. 
um, and feel free to, to customize those those handles. We do not we're not going to tell you not to. It's your tool. Um, by all means, make it fit your hands, make it comfortable for you. Do what you need to do. You can even take it to the grinding belt if necessary to, to round off edges. Um, we won't. That's not going to avoid any warranties. That does nothing to the actual um, usage of the. I'm sorry. The uh, uh, it doesn't affect the, the the tool in any way in its actions. So, by all means, feel free to do what you need to do uh, to make it most comfortable for you. Um, and for that, that's that's essentially what we have. And good luck. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, Josh, we have a couple questions. Um, first, uh, where can you get a GE 14-inch hoof nipper, hoof nipper blades reworked where one side is chipped? Um, we, we do all that here at the factory, here at GE Forge and Tool. Um, any rebuilds whatsoever, you can go on our, on our website, geforge.com. Um, there is a, a page for rebuilds. Uh, you can follow the simple three-step instructions um, and send it back to us. And if it's a warranty issue, we'll go ahead and rebuild no charge. Um, if we feel that it's been abused, we'll we'll contact the, the person and um, chat about it and, and see what we got. But uh, so go ahead and send them out back to GE Forge and Tool. Do you refurbish GE tools, and if so, how much? Yes, we, we do all of our rebuilds here at GE Forge and Tool, and we only do GE tools. Um, and, and I'll elaborate on this. Yeah, we, we only rebuild GE nippers. Our nippers are $130 plus shipping back to you. Um, and just to throw it in there, if the tool has been rebuilt by anyone other than GE Forge and Tool, we will not rebuild it, and we cannot um, warranty the tool. Just for the fact that we don't know the way that it's been rebuilt, the heating process, the riveting process, we, we didn't have control of any of that. So, um, yeah, please send it on back to GE Forge and Tool, and we will take care of, we'll make that nipper like brand new again. You'll get essentially the same life for a little more than half the cost of that original nipper. Okay. Um, the next question is, how can I sharpen the blades of nippers in between rebuilds? Can you sharpen the blades? We... <sighs> That's a tough... Uh, it's... We don't recommend that you that you take any kind of file or anything to the blades or disturb them at all. Um, what we would recommend, and it's it just depends on the wear of the the nipper. Um, if it if you sharpen it too much, and it, it may not be rebuildable if too much blade has been taken off of there. We we have a specific operation here where it's done. Um, very technically, um, so if you if you do have to sharpen it, uh, be wary that it might not be able to, to be rebuilt. Um, that's the best advice I can give for that. It's that's kind of a, a sticky one. I understand you need it to, to remain sharp and, and keep going. Um, if you can afford it, buy another nipper and send one in to get rebuilt, and you can always have one revolving. Um, that's that's the best advice I could I could give to you. Always have a fresh nipper on you. All right. Um, the next question is: Do most supply houses have the new clinchers? Do mo yes. They, we've been shipping them. Oh, I think we've been shipping them out now for about three months. Um, and you can tell by the bottom teeth um, that'll that'll be your best clue if you look at the, the bottom jaw and you'll just see V grooves in the bottom if you're um, curious about that the old style had the sharp teeth that were kind of um, 
they were essentially like the top job of that clincher. Now we've changed that. So if, for, for identification purposes, take a look at that bottom jaw. See if it just has V grooves and, and flats on the teeth, and um, you'll be able to tell the difference. All right. We, we have a request to, uh, show, uh, to play the video, the clincher's video again. Can you? Uh... Sure. Let's fire it up. And I'm open to uh, suggestions, thoughts, and that's simply with squeezing. There was no rolling, there was no twisting, pulling, pushing. Um, that's just a simple squeeze on that clincher there. I'll run it one more time just so you can see. So far, the reviews have been good. I've had a few out for testing purposes, and um, it, it seems to perform much better than the the other one does. Okay, the next question is, what's the price range of, of the tools that you have? Um, price range of our tools? Let's see, nippers, nippers go between, from what I've seen, uh, 205 up all the way up to $240. Um, clinchers are in the range of clinchers and pull-offs. I think they're about the same. They're in the range of 140 to 160, I believe. Uh, Crease pullers. I'm not real sure what the crease nail pullers are retailing for. I think they're around. I want to say 120, 130. Or the crease nail puller. Um, All right. Um, how long can I expect my nippers to last? Nippers? That's a good one. If we go by how many head of a horse they do. Um, the average, when we go off of averages, um, if you're doing five horses a day for five days a week, you're getting roughly 12 to 1,500 head of horse out of it. Um, that it, typically, that's we're getting one to three years. To, again, we go by head of horse because some, not everybody does the same amount of horses, um, and that averages out to if you're looking for a cost analysis, that actually averages out to about uh, 17 to 19 cents per horse. Um, so if you were to take a quarter off of every horse that you shod or trimmed, I guess. Um, at the end of that year, at the end of that first year, you would already have enough money to purchase a brand new nipper. Um, but you can expect twelve to fifteen hundred head of horse, so you get a couple years out of it on average. Okay. The next question is uh, about your warranties, your warranty policy. What what is that? Warranty policy. Um, you know, we're not. We're not ultra strict on our warranty process. We we do if it's obvious abuse, um, if if it's just bent up and beat up and looks like it's been pried with or heat up, heated up, um, and beat on. We we'll, we won't. We'll just send it on back. If it if it's normal wear and tear, um, if if it looks like the blades are soft and then then there was chipping that occurred that way. Um, if the rivet has failed in some way, broken, seized, um, we will replace it without any questions. Um, we, we try and do our best to keep the, keep our farriers working. Um, it, I can understand it's probably not a, a fun thing to, for your nipper to fail on you in the middle of it. So with, with a phone call, essentially most of the time, um, we'll just ask you to send it in, we'll take a look at it, and the day that we receive it, if it's a warranty issue, we will send you out a new one that day. Um, we try to 
we try to keep you going <laughs> as best we can. Um, if it's if it if it was an inadvertent issue, let's say you you, you caught a nail and maybe you pulled on the nail, um, we will most often do a rebuild, no charge for that first time. Um, um, and that's that's about it. We're, we're we're pretty lenient on that stuff. We we just try and keep them going. We understand the hard work and, and that stuff. But uh, obvious abuse, we'll just we'll just turn you away. Won't even ask any questions. So, but for the most part, we'll take care of you. Now, if it's just normal wear and tear, if it's if the blades are just getting worn back after you've, you've trimmed um, a couple thousand horses, well, that's that falls under the rebuild. Because the material will wear back. It's it's steel. It is hardened, but it does not hold up to the minerals. The you know depending on the environment you're in, um, you know if you if you if you're trimming it with hooves that have been walking in granite, um, you know very gritty sandy area. It's essentially like sandpaper. It's we recommend obviously keeping the hooves as clean as possible, and that'll limit the, the wear as much as possible. But um, as far as the warranties go, we'll take care of you. All right. Uh, the next question: um, the old uh, GE crease nail pullers um, had a hole above the puller slot to grab the shaft of a partially pulled nail, and apparently the 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 uh, the person who's asking the question says that the the new ones have been removed, and they're wondering why that was. The hole it was yes it, it had its purpose for that clencher. Um, I'm sorry for that crease nail puller. Um, that crease nail puller, as far as we have heard for over and over again, was a very poor design, and it needed that hole to, to get that nail all the way out of there. This new design, um, it has a rolled head. The teardrop opening in the jaws will actually pop the nail head up with just a squeeze. And it's a good, it's a decent squeeze. Don't get me wrong. It's not just a little light squeeze. But if you're squeezing on the nail, it'll actually pop that head up, and with a quick, swift roll, it will it will yank that nail completely out. There is absolutely no reason for that um, hole to be there anymore. So we redesigned it so it's it's hopefully a one step process to make things <laughs> make things easier on you guys. Every every time you have to do things in, in one or more steps, um, you're just that much under the horse that much longer. So remove that hole. It's not necessary. Uh, the new crease nail puller. Again, from the reviews that we've heard, it's fantastic. Um, it's, it's actually one of the more favorite tools that we've redesigned amongst the farriers that we've heard thus far. Okay, next question. Um, are other riveted GE tools, re tools rebuildable like the nippers can be? Absolutely. Um, your curb jaw clinchers, it can be sent in and we will refurbish, we will put a new rivet in it and we will refurbish the teeth, um, re-shine it up again. The cost for that one, oh, the cost for that one I believe is $90. Um, we'll resharpen everything, put a new rivet in it, re-shine it, oil it, and send that back to you. Um, right now, the nippers, the pull-offs, and the curb jaw clinchers um, are the only tools to be rebuilt. The crease nail puller, unfortunately, once it wears out, and it, it will eventually, the, the tips will wear back on a thing again because you're, you're grabbing into dirt and minerals. Um, it, it just wears back those jaws. They cannot be rebuilt. Um, everything else can. Okay. Do you refurbish crease nail pullers, and do you have any recommendations on how to make them last longer? Crease nail pullers, yeah, they cannot they cannot be rebuilt, um, unfortunately. Once the steel wears away on those, it, it's just gone. Um, my recommendations on 
the, the longevity of the life of those things is to really clean out the crease prior to pulling the nail. Um, the, the culprit behind wearing back the jaws on those crease nail pullers is the dirt and the mud and everything. It essentially acts like, again, it acts like sandpaper. And every time that you um, grab a nail, you're squeezing dirt and minerals in between that nail and the curb and the um, clincher head on those um, crease nail pullers. Um, so really crease out as best possible. It's, it brush it, you know, get a pick in there, whatever you got to do, and that'll, that'll make those last that much longer. Okay, the, um, the next question, can we send an old clincher that's been used very little <laughs> into you to change to the new style? Um, yeah, if you're unhappy with it, by all means. Um, and um, go ahead and refer back to this, this webinar. That's fine. Yeah, you, you tell him Josh said so. <laughs> yeah, by all means. If, if you're unhappy with that clincher, by all means, we'll, we'll replace it for you. Okay, the next question. Um, do you have, how many sizes of the clinchers do you have? We have our 14 inch curved jaw clincher and we have our 12 inch um, low nail clincher. Uh, so two sizes, low nail clincher obviously for, we recommend for uh, anything under a five. Um, and for a five and over, we'll recommend the, um, the larger, the 14 inch curve jaw clincher. Okay, do you have a video uh, for your new pull off? Ah, no, I, um, not yet, not yet. <clears throat> That's in the making as we speak. And we're gonna get all this on the website as well. I'll be looking forward to it in the next 30 days or so. We'll, we'll get some stuff posted up on our website um, so everybody can see it. Um, any, if there's any concerns about pull-off and the, the jaws being shaped the way they are, um, you can see in the action of it. I will shoot some video. Um, essentially, when those jaws are tipped down like that, when you open them up, <clears throat> they open up to flat. So as you squeeze them together, the blade actually moves up and away from the hoof wall, any sort of the hoof whatsoever, um, and and does lift the shoe off in the same action. Okay. Any uh, any new designs in the works for nippers? Oh. Let's see. I don't have anything right now. Um, no, no designs to speak of, um, other than improving on our cutting action now. Um, I, I do have some stuff in the works to, to make the blades a little tougher and a little sharper. Um, but as far as the nipper goes, I'm still I'm still working on uh, um, getting getting info back on a, maybe a, a nail cutter. Um, I, I, from what I gather, they're gaining popularity. Um, I could be wrong. I don't know. Um, but no, no nippers right now. Nothing, nothing significant. Okay. And how long are the, are your warranties generally? Um, the, the tool is warranted for the lifetime of the tool for any, any sort of, um, workmanship issues on our end. If, if for any reason the, the blades break, or the, the rivet fails, um, the handle breaks, the head bends, for, and for the length of the life of the tool, as long as it's not been abused, the warranty is good. Okay. Um, and if it, hasn't, if it hasn't been rebuilt by someone else as well. Good point. We will, warranty. Good. Um, for those who are in humid or in wet environments, uh, what can be done to shine up the tool? One, one more time. Um, for those who work in humid and wet environments, 
what can be done for them to shine the tool back up? To shine it back up? Yes, sir. Um, yeah, you can. You can. You can. You know, oil that tool up the entire tool. If that, that's the best advice I can give to you. Um, even the oils from your hands are going to leave some patina on that nipper. Um, if you want, take some some Scotch Brite. Um, or some steel wool or something, and you can uh, take that surface rust off, and and then just slather some some three in one oil all over it. Rub it down with a rag, and and you know either put it back in the bag, or um, it, even if it sits in your box in your in your truck, as as long as it's been oiled, it'll it'll stay shiny. But the steel wool, um, Scotch Brite, something like that, that'll certainly help to keep that surface rust off. Okay. Um, do you have any student or educational discounts? Yes. If you are enrolled, if you're currently enrolled in a um, in a school, you you'll get depending on where it is, will um, you'll get a discounted tool there. Um, we've opened up to many schools now um, to, and they are buying them and keeping the price um, low for the students under contract of us. So, um, um, As far as we don't have anything technically that, that we say um, for, for any students that have just come out of. Um, hopefully, hopefully they're able to get their Discounted tools at the school. Okay, and then um, do you have any quantity discounts on refurbished refurbished tools? Um, no, we haven't. Um, we don't come across that one yet. Um, you can check with. You can also send your tool back through a dealer, um, depending on. How much they would like to charge? You can ask your dealer, your nearest dealer, wherever you got your tool from, um, and because we do give them a small discount, they may pass that discount on. So by all means, go ahead and talk to your dealer and and see what they're going to get you get you for. Okay. All right. And uh, final question: um, the uh, what about taking a file to the stops? Would you recommend that? Uh, I, I don't recommend that one either. Um, it's a it, filing it at any point on the nipper is is affecting the way that it's going to close, the way that it's going to nip. Um, you know, it's that's a that's a, again it's a sticky one. If you if you feel your blades are wearing back, um, if you feel your blades are wearing back too quickly and you need to file on the stops, give us a call. It could be a heat treat issue. Um, you know, some some do slip through that are that are not done correctly, unfortunately. Um, but if it's if it's for cleaning purposes and you want to do a real light pass, maybe take a they call they have what they call a diamond hone, um, and it's not as aggressive as say a standard mill file. Um, you know, I could recommend that using a diamond hone. All right, great. Well, thank you again, Josh and GE Forge and Tool. Again, you can learn more about their products at geforge.com. If you missed any of this webinar or would like to rewatch it, please visit AmericanFarriers.com after 7 p.m. Central Time to find the video. But before I leave, I'd like to thank each of you for attending and being a part of this webinar. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did, and I hope you to see you here for the next session. Whether you read the magazine, visit our website, or follow us on Facebook, we'll be sure to share that information with you. And with that, I'll say have a great night.